live from the tent part of the living room in Ipswich, Massachusetts. It's Wednesday afternoon. Good morning. Thanks for joining us for social distancing story time today. Evie, are you going to sit on my lap or are you going to go sit in that front row seat in the chair? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, then you can sit in that other chair if you want. You can sit wherever you want. Did you pick out this location for story time today? Do Because we think it's kind of exciting to go to different parts of the house and different parts of the room to read our books now, right? How about this one? That's a good one. Okay. All right. You go sit down so I can start reading it. This is Eve's special monkey tent, right, dude? All right. I don't know where you're going. You're not going to be able to see very well back there. All right. We're going to start with the comic book, Narwhal, and, oh, no, wait, not Narwhal, just peanut butter and jelly. This is another Ben Clanton book. We love my, his I, comics. I, was, I can see one right here. Oh, okay, that's great. Perfect. Then sit right there. And this is one Stasha has been doing um, a lot of Ben. Ooh, I got really tall sitting on the beanbag. Stasha has been doing a lot of Ben Clanton's drawing classes that he's been doing on his Facebook page. I think he even has one today. This afternoon, maybe. They're pretty cool. If you want to check those out. Falling off a little. I'm okay. All right. No, you like? I'm okay. I just folded over the beanbag. It's okay. Peanut butter and jelly. Do you like peanut butter, Evie? Do you like to eat peanut butter? Yeah. All right. Oh, a uh, sweet and salty story. Did somebody take a bite of a cookie? Yeah. Ahoy, Jelly. What's that small, strange waffle you're eating? Nom, nom, nom. Uh, Narwhal, this is not a waffle. It's a peanut butter cookie. Mm, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> Peanut butter? Ha, <laughs> that sounds funny. What is it? What? You've never heard of peanut butter? Uh, does it taste like a waffle? Mm, no. Like strawberries? Pickles? Stir-fried licorice? No, no. An ick. Stir-fried licorice? Yuckaroo. Maybe it tastes like stir-fried pickle licorice on strawberry waffles? Yuck! Have you actually eaten something like that before? No. No. I have. You have? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Well it's, well, it's really, 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 really yucky. Oh, yeah, I bet. No, not really. Actually, I pretty much only eat waffles. Whew. Wait a minute. Only waffles? You only eat waffles? That can't be true. What about spaghetti? You must have had spaghetti before. Did we make meatballs to have on spaghetti yesterday? Yeah, we read that one the other day. Spa, what? Seriously, what about ice cream? Evie, do you like ice cream? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. That is just wrong. Pizza? Um, nope. Mashed potatoes? Um, Is that anything like mashed waffles? No. Mashed waffles? Ah, uh, really? No. You must have had something other than waffles. Cake? Apples? Cheese? Pie? Artichokes? Marshmallows? Guacamole? Uh, sushi? French fries? French fries. I French fries. Yes, you do. Nope, nope. Nobody nope. No, no, nobody knows. Narwhal, you can't just eat only waffles. Here, try this peanut butter cookie. Why? Have you ever heard of too much of a good thing? That's so silly. How can you have too many waffles? How can you? I mean, really, right? Never mind. But maybe you'll like this cookie even more than waffles. Good one, Jelly. Nothing is better than a waffle. Who likes waffles? Me. 
Evie likes waffles. Daddy. Daddy likes waffles. Do you like waffle stuff? What kind of a waffle maker do you have? A minion. A minion one. Hey, I have a glue one. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Okay. Thanks, Jelly, but I think I'll stick with waffles. Just like one little bite. I'll tell you what. I'll make you an extra large waffle if you try this peanut butter cookie. How big would this extra large waffle be? Could be a good deal. Even bigger than you. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to try a nibble. It hurt? Wait, some people are allergic to peanut butter. You aren't allergic to peanut butter, are you, Narwhal? Allergic? I don't think so. But I once knew a seahorse who couldn't eat waffles. It was the saddest thing I've ever heard. Yet she swore she was happy so long as she could eat gummy bears. I love gummy bears. No, I love gummy bears. You, you do love gummy bears. They're my favorite. I definitely like them more than waffles. Can I, have, can I have a gummy bear? I don't have one right now, but I've got some jelly beans. Maybe later. Can the Allergic Aquatic beans? Animals Awareness can Association like advises beans? caution. Yeah, later. When trying a common right allergen. Right well, because I'm reading right now. We'll get a jelly bean after. After the book? Yeah. Okay, here I go. One teeny tiny taste. So what do you think? It's fantastic. So sweet. Nom nom. Nom so salty. It's yummy. Nom 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 nom. It's scrumptious. It's yumptious. It's, it's, oh God. Oh, whoops. That was chapter one. I think we're gonna save the other chapters maybe for tomorrow. Cause that was a pretty, that was a pretty long part. No, 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 we have to finish it now. Well, let's read, we can read the delicious facts today and then we'll switch to another book, okay? Uh, so here are some okay. facts you may not know. Scientists believe that narwhals suck up their food whole. Oh, and they eat mainly fish. Do you suck up your food whole or do you chew it? I chew it. That's a good idea. I prefer waffles and peanut butter. That's what narwhal says. Most jellyfish sting their prey with their tentacles before eating it. Blue whales, they're the largest animal ever, eat mainly tiny little krill. They eat oodles of them, as many as 40 million krill per day. Evie, don't touch that. Krill are so small, you might not even be able to see them. They're so teeny in the ocean. Humpback whales work together. Look at this. That's a humpback whale. To create complex... Well, let's see. To create complex... Evie, your head's in the way, sweetness. Yellow. Well, we'll find out in a minute. Okay, honey buns, you're in the way. Okay. Humpback whales work together to create complex bubble nets to corral fish to eat. So they kind of trap the fish by swimming around them in circles. Sea cucumbers eat all sorts of things, including, wait for this, you guys. Poop. Poop. Yuck. Yuck. And tiger sharks are often referred to as the trash cans of the sea because they will eat just about anything from pigs to tires to explosives. Anything they find on the bottom of the ocean. Maybe a piece of an old boat. Okay, Evie, can you come back? Sweetheart. That's very good fake eating, but let's back up. Okay, what's the next book, Eve? Pick the next one. Too bad mice? Okay. All right, you gotta sit down so your head's not in the way, okay? All right. I will see. I don't oh. think you're going to be able to see there. I will. You will? Okay. So, another Beatrix Potter book, The Tale of Two Bad Mice. Our Beatrix Potter collection is really getting us through with new books every day during this quarantine. Okay. All right. Excuse me, Eve. I need to move closer so people can see the picture. Okay? Whoopity whoop. Once upon a time, there was a very beautiful doll's house. It was, come sit over here. It was red brick with white windows, and it had real muslin curtains and a front door and a chimney. That's a very nice doll house. Watch out, you can see. 
It belonged to two dolls called Lucinda and Jane. At least it belonged to Lucinda, but she never, Evie, you've got to stop, honey, but she never ordered meals. Jane was the cook, but she never did any cooking because the dinner had been bought ready-made in a box full of shavings. There were two red lobsters and a ham, a fish, a pudding, and some pears and oranges. They would not come off the plates, but they were extremely beautiful. It does look like a nice dinner, doesn't it? One morning, Lucinda and Jane had gone out for a drive in the doll's perambulator. There was no one in the nursery, and it was very quiet. Presently, there was a little scuffling, scratching noise in a corner near the fireplace, where there was a hole under the skirting board. Tom Thumb put out his head for a moment and then popped it in again. Tom Thumb was a mouse. A minute afterward, Hunkamunka, his wife, put her head out too. And when she saw that there was no one in the nursery, she ventured out on the oilcloth under the coal box. The doll's house stood at the other side of the fireplace. Tom Thumb and Hunkamunka went cautiously across the hearth rug. They pushed the front door. It was not fast. Tom Thumb and Hunkamunka went upstairs and peeped into the dining room. Then they squeaked with joy. Such a lovely dinner was laid out upon the table. There were tin spoons and lead knives and forks and two dolly chairs, all so convenient. Tom Thumb set to work at once to carve the ham. It was a beautiful, shiny yellow streaked with red. The knife crumpled up and hurt him. He put his finger in his mouth. Why did he tore him? Well, because he, he cut it a little bit. When he cut it away. It's not boiled enough. It's hard. You have a try, Hunkamunka. Hunkamunka stood up on her chair and chopped at the ham with another lead knife. It's hard as the ham's the cheesemongers, said Hunkamunka. The ham broke off the plate with a jerk and rolled down to the table. Leave it alone, said Tom Thumb. Give me some fish, Hunkamunka. Hmm. They're really having a tough time. Hunkamunka tried every tin spoon in turn. The fish was glued to the dish. Then Tom Thumb lost his temper. He put the ham in the middle of the floor, hit it with the tongs and with the shovel. Bang, bang, smash, smash. The ham flew all to pieces for underneath the shiny paint, it was made of nothing but plaster. That's like cement. Cement. Cement, yeah. Then there was no end to the rage and disappointment of Tom Thumb and Hunkamunka. They broke up the pudding, the lobsters, the pears and the oranges. As the fish would not come off the plate, they put it into the red-hot, crinkly paper fire in the kitchen, but it would not burn either. And why wouldn't it burn? I don't know. Was it a real fire? No. It was a paper fire. Tom Thumb went up the kitchen chimney and looked out at the top. There was no soot. Why was there no soot? Because the fire was... Pretend. While Tom Thumb was up the chimney, Hunkamunka had another disappointment. She found some tiny canisters upon the dresser labeled rice, coffee, sago. But when she turned them upside down, there was nothing inside except red and blue beads. Beans. Beads. Then those mice set to work to do all the mischief they could, especially Tom Thumb. He took Jane's clothes out of the chest of drawers in her bedroom and he threw them out of the top floor window. But Hunkamunka had a frugal mind. After pulling half the feathers out of Lucinda's bolster, she remembered that she herself was in want of a feather bed. Hmm, I think they're coming up with a plan. With Tom Thumb's assistance, she carried the bolster downstairs and across the hearth rug. It was difficult to squeeze the bolster into the mouse hole, but they managed it somehow. Then Hunkamunka went back and fetched a chair, a bookcase, a birdcage, and several small odds and ends. The bookcase and the birdcage refused to go into the mouse hole. Too big. Why too big? Well, the mouse hole's kind of teeny, and the birdcage was pretty big. Hunkamunka left them behind the coal box and went to fetch a cradle. Hunkamunka was just returning with another chair when suddenly there was a noise of talking outside upon the landing. The mice rushed back to their hole and the dolls came into the nursery. What a sight to meet the eyes of Jane and Lucinda. Lucinda sat upon the upset kitchen stove and stared. And Jane leaned against the kitchen dresser and smiled. But neither of them made any remark. The bookcase and the birdcage were rescued from under the coal box, but Hunkamunka 
has got the cradle and some of Lucinda's clothes. She also has some useful pots and pans and several other things. The little girl that the doll's house belonged to said, I will get a doll dressed like a policeman. But the nurse said, I will set a mouse trap. So that is the story of the two bad mice. They were not so very naughty after all, because Tom Thumb paid for everything he broke. He found a crooked sixpence under the hearth rug, and upon Christmas Eve, he and Hunkamunka stuffed it into one of the stockings of Lucinda and Jane. And very early, every morning before anybody is awake, Hunkamunka comes with a dustpan and a broom to sweep the dolly's house. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. Are you two girls snuggling? Is this what it looks like behind the camera? Mm -hmm. Snuggle time for the kids. Nice. Okay. All right, let's see what book is next. Oh, Dr. Seuss, mm -hmm. Mr. Brown can moo. Can you? Moo. All right, let's try and make some noises. Moo. Oh, the wonderful sounds Mr. Brown can do. He can sound like a cow. He can go, moo, moo. Moo, moo, moo. He can sound like a bee. Mr. Brown can bzzz. How about you? Can you go buzz, buzz? He can sound like a cork. He can sound like horse feet. interesting technique you're using here. He can sound like a rooster. He can sound like an owl. Mr. Brown can do it. How about you? He can sound like the rain. Dibble, 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 dop. Dibble, 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 dop, dop, dop. Dibble, 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 dop, 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 dibble, dibble. He can sound like a clock. He can tick. He can. He can sound like a hand on a door. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Mr. Brown is a wonder. Boom, boom, boom. Mr. Brown makes thunder. He makes lightning. Splat, splat, splat. And it's very hard to make a noise like that. Mr. Brown can whistle. Very soft, very high, like the soft, soft whisper of a butterfly. Maybe you can too. I think you ought to try. Pretty good. Oh, the wonderful sounds Mr. Brown can do. Why don't you try to do them too? Turn the page and let's review, shall we? Okay, ready? Moo, moo. Bzz, bzz. cock a doodle Ho, ho. Tipple, tipple, top. Tipple, tipple, top. Is that okay? Okay, you can pick the last one. This one is You Are My Sunshine by Caroline J. Church. Do we love this song? Do you want to sing it with me, kids? Yep. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. 
You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Please don't take my sunshine away. Kids bop, that was not. But maybe someday, you want to be a kids bop superstar singer, right? That's your plan? Is that your plan, dude? Mm-hmm. All right. Last book. What's this one about? A Bed of Your Own by Midge Kelly and Mary McQuinlan. Mary McQuillan. Mary McQuinlan is a sheep. Is a sheep, you think? Yeah. I'm not sure, but I think she might be a person. She might have drawn the pictures for this. Evie, did you just start sleeping in a in a bed of your own? In your own big kid bed? Yeah. Not my big, 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 big. Oh, not a big, big, big one? This is the story of Susie Sue, ready for bed, just like you. And it is your nap time, so you are ready for bed. She brushed her teeth, she picked up her Ted, she clambered and climbed into her bed. She yawned a huge yawn. <sighs> and turned out the light, but something somewhere wasn't quite right. I'm squished, I'm squashed, I'm uncomfy, she said. I think there's something wrong with the bed. I know, said the cow, this bed's far too small. I've tried and I've tried and I can't sleep at all. Oh, what a shock, what a drama of dramas. A cow in the bed? A cow in pajamas? What are you doing, said Susie Sue. What do you think, said the cow with a moo. I'm trying to go to sleep, of course. Oh, please do be quiet, grumbled the horse. How in the world can I get a nap with the pair of you going yappity yap? Oh, what a shock, what a bolt from the blue. A horse in the bed with his cuddly toys too. And when Susie Sue fell back in a heap, what she thought was a pillow was really a sheep. How can I sleep? How can I doze? Please, please, please let go of my nose. Oh, what a shock, what a dreadful surprise. By now, Susie Sue was getting quite wise. She threw back the covers. She called loud and clear. Are there any more animals hiding in here? Just little me. And Susie Sue fell out of the bed. Goodness gracious. Oh, golly. Oh, gosh. No wonder the bed was a terrible squash. No wonder nobody could get any sleep. With a goat and a horse and a cow and a sheep, all tossing and turning, all hogging the covers and fighting for pillows and kicking each other. Is that sometimes what it's like to share a bed with the small person? Mm -hmm. For goodness sake, yawned Susie Sue. What on earth got into you? Don't you have a bed of your own? We can't sleep there, said the sheep with a groan. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's too dark. It's too light. There's something about it that isn't quite right. But Susie Sue was stern and strong. She led them back to where they belong. She tucked them up, and then she read a book about going to bed. She hugged them all and said, good night. But just as she was about to turn out the light, she had an idea and suddenly said, it's all very well, this going to bed, but what really matters is falling asleep. That's the hardest part, said the sheep. So Susie Sue... That's right. She is sleeping right in the middle. So Susie Sue climbed in the bed. What you have to do, she said, is feel how your bed is all comfy and cozy. Feel how it makes you all drowsy and dozy. Feel a safe, soothing softness begin to spread from the tips of your shoes to the tops of your head. And all of your worries are wafting away like a bunch of balloons on a cloudless spring day. And you're in a boat floating downstream, drifting away on a beautiful dream. In the silence that followed, you could hear a pin drop. Go on, 
said the cow. Please don't stop. Oh dear, said the goat. Oh dear, oh dear. She's fallen asleep, but she can't sleep here. She's hogging the bed. She's starting to snore. She'll keep us awake. It's happened before. Oh, silly Susie Sue, they said. Come on, let's take you back to bed so that each of us has our own place to rest. The mouse has a hole. The hen has a nest. The pig has a sty. It's smelly but snug. The dog has his house. The cat has her rug. They all have beds, and you do too. So snuggle down, Susie Sue. That was the story of Susie Sue, safe in her own bed, like you should be too. All right, those, oh, excuse me, Evie. Those are the books for today from, read from our fabulous tent area. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for, for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Oh, we got another thanks, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, yep, that's a very nice big kid tooth growing in. Very exciting stuff, you guys. See you tomorrow.